So we're going to look at now a specific type of titration called, well, which is uh, between acids and bases. So we're going to look at an acid-base titration. <clears throat> okay, we spoke in the introductory video about the introductory titration video about the idea of an equivalence point. And we know that the equivalence point is when neither reactant is in excess. That is to say that the, the reactant that was in the burette and the reactant that was in the conical flask are present in the ratio given by the chemical equation. So if we have a chemical equation that says that two sodium ions are going to react with one carbonate ion to produce some, some products, and we have sodium in the burette, we have sodium ions in the burette, and carbonate ions in the conical flask, then the equivalence point will be reached when, there are, when we have added twice as many sodium ions to the conical flask as, co as carbonate ions that are already in there. So when the equivalence point is reached, sodium ions and carbonate ions will exist, will be present in a 2 to 1 ratio. Okay, so that's how we defined the equivalence point. Now, similarly, we define something called the end point of a titration. Now the end point is identified by a colour change. So the end point occurs when the, the solution in the conical flask suddenly changes colour. And when that, when that solution in the conical flask suddenly changes colour, that is when we end the titration. So while the equivalence point is the point at which the two reactants are present in the ratio given by their chemical equation, the end point is when we actually stop titrating, is when we stop the process and measure the titer that we've used, measure the amount of solution we've released from the burette. Okay, and this end point, this end point is, is the way we identify this end point, we, we, the way that we decide when to end the titration is when the colour of the solution in the conical flask changes. Okay? Now, in order to ensure that the we want to get the equivalence point and the end point as close as possible to one another. We want to stop the titration when these are present in the ratio given by the reaction. That's when we want to stop the titration in order to really calculate to a high degree of accuracy the concentration of the unknown solution. So in order to ensure that the colour change uh, occurs close to or equivalence point, we want to choose an indicator that is going to change colour at or close to the equivalence point. Now, if we have a titration between a strong acid and a strong base, then we're going to have a we're going to have we're going to draw something that's called a pH a pH curve. Okay, so a pH curve shows the pH with respect to the volume of acid that's been added from the burette, assuming the the acid is in the burette and the base is in the flask already. So we've got a strong acid and a strong base. So if we have a strong acid and a strong then the pH curve is going to look a little something like this. So as we as we begin to add acid to the base, it's going to start decreasing from 14. Okay, and then as we get close to the equivalent point it's going to drop very sharply and then peter out close to one as we continue adding strong acid. So we know that when a, uh, so in this case, we can see that the equivalence point is around there, okay? When we, when we react a strong acid with a strong base, we know that we produce a salt and we produce water. So when this reaction has occurred to a completion, when the reaction between the strong acid and the occurred to completion, there is, that means that neither the strong acid or the strong base is present in excess. So the only thing that we have in the solution is salt and water. So that means that the pH is going to be 7, it's going to be neutral. So therefore we can tell that the equivalence point, the pH at the equivalence point, is going to be 7. Now, we want to choose an indicator to add to the solution in the conical flask, such that the solution changes colour at the equivalence point. So we want to make the end, we want to choose an appropriate indicator such that the end point is close to the equivalence point. Now by looking at this graph we can see that the equivalence point occurs at a pH of 7. 
Now, the pH of this solution, the pH of the solution in the conical flask, drops very sharply as we get close to the equivalence point. You know, we might have a pH of 10, we might add one more drop of acid and get to a pH of 7, then we might add one more drop of acid and get to a pH of about 4. So for that reason, it makes it a lot easier, because of the sharp nature of this change in pH, it makes it a lot easier to choose an appropriate indicator. So we know that the pH is 7 at the equivalence point. So we want to choose an indicator that changes colour at a pH of 7. So this pH range is listed here for the three indicators we've got are the pH ranges for which each of these indicators change colour. So we can see that methyl red changes colour between a pH of 4.2 and 6.3. A pH of 7 lies outside this range and so methyl red is not going to be appropriate. Now we've got bromothymol blue and phenol red left. Now the pH of 7 lies in the pH ranges of both of these indicators. So basically phenol red, if we colour code this, if we have phenol red colour coded there, okay, phenol red is going to change, change colour between here and about here. If we have bromothymol blue, colour code it like that, Bromothymol blue is going to change colour between here and about here. Okay, so either of these is really appropriate because there's so little difference in the volume of acid that we're adding with this, with this sharp pH change. Either of these indicators will be appropriate for this titration. Because the pH changes at about 7, each of the, as, we, as we add a drop to get to 7 and another drop to go past 7 and go to a pH of about 4, both of these uh, indicators are going to change colour very quickly and very close to the equivalence point. And that, for that reason, they're both, either of these would be appropriate for the titration of a strong acid and a strong base. Now, this is the pH curve of a, a strong acid and a strong base. However, if we have, for example, a weak base, then things are going to look a little bit different. All right, so we're going to we'll draw a, a weak acid and a strong base here. Now, if we have a weak acid and a strong base, okay, and so pH of 7, we'll just list that on the axis there. If we have a weak acid and a strong base, and we're starting out with a strong base, so we're going to start close to 14. We're going to add acid. It's going to suddenly start to drop pretty quickly, as before. However, it's going to plateau out at a higher pH than previously. Because we've only got a weak acid, when the uh, solution is ultimately quite acidic, because we've added excess acid, then the pH is going to be a bit higher than it was with the strat at closer to 6 rather than, you know, 2 or 3. So here, the equivalence point is in this region. Alright, so... While bromothymol blue and phenol red were both appropriate for a titration between a strong acid and a strong base, here, because the, the equivalence point occurs at a slightly higher pH, you know, in this sort of range here, we want, well, this is the sort of range that we want the end point to occur in. This is the sort of range we want the solution in the conical flask to change colour. So for that reason, because it's a bit higher than it was before, phenol red would be a more appropriate choice of indicator for this situation. Because we've got a weak acid and a strong base, the equivalence point occurs at a higher pH and so just colour at, at a slightly higher pH range than bromothymol blue and is therefore more appropriate than bromothymol blue to uh, signify the end point of this titration. Similarly, if we would have a, a, uh, a strong acid and a weak base, then this, whole, then this whole pH curve would be shifted down. The same way that this is shifted up as a result of the acid only being weak. If we had a strong acid and a weak base, then the whole thing would be shifted down. Uh, in a similar fashion. So if we had a strong acid and a weak base, then it would look a little bit more like this. So if we have a weak base, then we can start with a, lo a lower pH. We're going to go down to here. Okay, and so in this situation, methyl red would probably be more appropriate because we're looking at a lower pH range at which the equivalence point occurs. Okay, we're looking at sort of generally a lower region at which the pH changes.
Okay, so basically when we're, look, when we're choosing the indicator that we want to use to identify the endpoint of an, a titration, and so when we're choosing the indicator with which we want to ensure that the endpoint is close to the equivalence point, we're looking for an indicator that's going to change, change color sharply around the equivalence point. So there may be more than one option, however we're going to choose the most appropriate, in this case the most appropriate is methyl red. One final thing to add on to this discussion of pH curves. So we've looked at strong bases, strong acids and weak bases, and weak acids with strong bases. However, if we were to do a weak acid and a weak base, then the pH curve would look a little bit more like this. It would, rather than having that sharp point, that sharp equivalence point that's easy to, for which it is easy to find an indicator that's going to change colour, Okay, this is what the pH curve is going to look like for a weak acid and a weak base. So rather than having that sharp shape for which it's easy to choose an indicator that will change colour in this region, this, uh, the pH changes much more gradually for the titration between a weak acid and a weak base through this region here. And for that reason, it's an indicator that changes colour sharply uh, around the equivalence point. So for that reason, if we have a weak acid or a weak base, for which of which we want to know the concentration to a to a high degree. If we want to standardize a weak acid or a weak base, as in make a weak acid or a weak base a standard solution by finding out its concentration to a high degree of accuracy, then what we're going to have to have to do is if we have a weak acid, we're going to have to titrate it with a strong base in order to ensure that we get that sharp region at the equivalence point. Okay? Similarly, if we have a weak base and we want to find out its concentration via titration, then we're going to have to use a strong acid to ensure that we don't get this very gradual, you know, difficult to deal with shape on the, on the pH curve, okay? If we have a weak acid with a strong acid, we're going to get a nice, and everything's going to be a little bit easier to deal with. So that's what we're dealing with when we have pH curves and endpoints. So it's basically just, we need, we want to look for an indicator that's going to change colour sharply around the equivalence point of a titration, so that we can identify the equivalence point. So we define the equivalence point as the point at which the reactants are present in the, in the ratio given by the chemical equation. And we define the end point as the point at which the colour of the solution in the conical flask changes. So the end point is also the point at which we end the titration. So we want to make the end point as close as possible to the equivalence point in order to ensure that our results are accurate. And we do that by selecting the right indicator as I have shown.